Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zoom Into Wine. It's time for the show and your host, Ian Blackburn. All right, my friends, next on our lineup of incredible Cabernet producers is my friend Linda Neal, live from Tierra Roja Vineyard in Napa Valley. Linda, you're looking well. Well, you're very kind, Ian. You're looking great, too. I wish we were together in person. Well, I was very fortunate this year to get up there to see you and to pull some leaves and to do some tasting and to hear some good news. You've got a lot going on, and it's great to have you back in Napa. Um, I know you finished up your, your tour of service, and that was really cool. Um, and you stayed very busy during that COVID, that COVID year. Yes, it's really been busy. One of the beautiful things of that period of time is I had more time to be in the vineyard. Prior to going to Morocco, I had two vineyards, two wine labels, and I was just spread really, really thin. But since coming home and COVID, it's given me the freedom to just spend more and more time in my own vineyard, which I have really loved. Awesome. Well, we're going to go right into your slideshow now and learn about Tierra Roja. Uh, we're gonna taste the 2018 tonight. Uh, this is a just an amazing little property Linda owns. It's in the absolute divine location in Oakville. We'll learn a lot about this brand. I hope you guys enjoy this amazing selection. You talk about the plow being your symbol on the label and is that, uh, who is that in the picture with the, the horse and the plow? Well, the inspiration, one of the inspirations for the label is this picture of Ron Di Natal. So this is a picture of Ron farming this property back in the 20s. He owned the property from 1923 until 1949. And he live, only came here as a, you know, like a getaway, a cabin and farm fruits and vegetables, which he sold in his uh, little grocery store down in South San Francisco. Hmm. And I never met Ron, of course, this was a long time ago, but I did know his uh, son, Al. Al Dinatel used to live two doors down. And I was at a Christmas party one time and he said, hey, did I ever tell you that my family used to own this place? And I said, no. And he said, I've got some pictures. And I took the drink out of his hand and said, go get them. <laughs> and he did. He went home and this was one of the fantastic pictures that he brought back for me, his yeah, dad farming. But we tell that's your property. Well, I know. Isn't that amazing? So cool. Some of those trees are still there, I think. Yes, in fact, I'm sitting under an ancient Kalamata olive while we're doing this today. Beautiful. And uh, the brand's called Tierra Roja because of the, the red soils on your slope. Yes, check out this picture here. So this picture was taken in 1988 when we cut the terraces. In the past, there were vineyards on the hill uh, and of course that hill is behind me in the live shot here. And, but they were just on the slope and they were, what was left was just abandoned roots start growing out, nothing that could be farmed. So in order to make it more farmable, we cut these terraces and then planted the upper vineyard in 1989. The lower vineyard, which, uh, oh, I don't know. Can you see my little cursor there? This green part was planted just prior to me uh, purchasing the property in 1987 mm -hmm. and um, there you go and here's a look at some of the rows and what is the the stone the primary stone that you're finding in the soil well see that's the beauty of it you look at that big rock there and it looks like a piece of granite when you first cut the rock out of the ground it's gray like a piece of granite but according to david howell uh preeminent uh, geologist that does a lot of work with us here in the Napa Valley. This is just one gigantic piece of lava that's been decomposing for millions of years. So as soon as you break the rock open, it starts to rust. And as that rust sloughs off, that becomes the iron rich soil. Huh. And, you know, there's a couple rules in the wine industry and 
the restaurant industry too. Uh, location, location, location. And uh, take a look at the neighborhood here. Um, Tierra Roja right next to Rudd across the street and right kind of behind you is Dolly Vall. Uh, just to the south, you've got Joseph Phelps on your side of the street with the Bacchus Vineyard. And across the street is Tench, really, really awesome fruit. And Tench's next door neighbor, not too bad either with Screaming Eagle. It is a great neighborhood. So I'm the, uh, the littlest, certainly, of all of these, you know, fabulous wineries and perhaps the least known because of that. Um, and I think we hold our own with some delicious juice. And how many total acres is that, Linda? So the entire parcel is seven and a half with less than five in vineyard. And you've been doing this a long time. You, this has been your life. This is not like you uh, were a tech billionaire and started up in Napa Valley. <laughs> you, uh, you literally went to school for horticulture back in college, right? So... Uh, to answer your question, uh, yes, a little bit of horticulture, both in high school, junior college, primarily business, but I got very involved with future farmers, took all the ag classes back in high school, and just fell in love with it. I had grown up in Southern California, but uh, you know, didn't know anything about agriculture when I moved to start high school in Oakdale, California and just immediately fell in love with it and knew that that was my calling. And here's your team in the vineyard. Yes, we had uh, we had some fun. We had a photographer out here uh, last year, last spring, and Ruben Rubio, who's uh, in the blue checkered shirt there, he's just a right arm, my right arm. When I wasn't here, he took care of everything. When, he, when we're both here together, we make plans together. We you know, develop a team approach to everything that we do. I'm really blessed to have him in my life. And, and this year you had the addition of a rock star winemaker to your lineup. So you're like a, a small market baseball team that just uh, hired a Cy Young award-winning pitcher. Uh, this well, I am really excited. You yeah. know, what was funny about that, Ian, is I didn't even know uh, what a rock star he was when I asked him to come and meet with me. We just have a mutual friend that's been trying to put us together for years. And so I, what I was looking for was someone that I could really talk to that would have the same passion that would want to collaborate. And so I, you know, I got a hold of him. We walked the vineyard, we met, we had coffee, we had dinner, had dinner with his wife got to really know each other before making a decision. And I am so excited, so happy uh, for our working relationship. And then as a bonus, I didn't even know until the day that you were at the house for the um, little premiere party that we had. I didn't even know until I got Nikita's description of, of uh, Benoit's history that he already had 2,300 point wines under his belt. I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, he is uh he is a name to watch, everybody. Um Benoit Troquet. Is am I pronouncing that Troquette. correct? Troquette. Troquette. Cool. Well, tonight we're tasting the 18. And um 18 is another great Napa Valley vintage. Any comments about uh 18 before we sign off, Linda? Well, yes. I've already introduced it in Las Vegas and in Virginia Beach. And this vintage has received the most overwhelmingly popular reception of any vintage that I have had since maybe the 2004. So I'm really excited. Every restaurant that we went to, uh, whether it was an, you know, an old friend or a, a new friend in Las Vegas, every single one of them ordered it on the spot. They loved it. And so I'm really hoping that that translates into your customers loving it as well. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you on the Zoom and to taste your amazing wine. Thank you for the length of your of our friendship and our partnership. And um, I really love your touch, Linda. So congratulations on all the, the new energy and uh, I think all good things are coming for you. 
Well, Ian, and thank you for always putting on these beautiful first quality events. I always look forward to participating with you. Uh, and I hope we get together and do live events again soon. 2022, okay? Promise. Got it. See you then. All right, if not sooner. <laughs> thank Thanks. you, Ian. Bye-bye.